funny, when you, when you actually look at the bay blocks on the Embarcadero, you gotta wonder why this was built. I think of this quote from this guy, Michael Strobert from New York, who in commenting on these benches at Lincoln Center says, the fuck am I supposed to do here? Sit uncomfortably? Well, I've been doing some research and it turns out that if you look at this building on the side of Pier 9, you actually can see exactly where the shape and dimensions of those benches came from. You see how this is kind of like stepped here? And you see how that wraps around over there? That partially determines the design of these double decker bay blocks that went along here. And there was actually a lot more of these when it first started. You can sort of see where some of these things got taken out. Thank God they took it out because now this is where like Ishad would do a front side nose slide. Tiago would do a switch backside tail slide across this fucking thing, which is insane. After the Loma Prieta earthquake in 1989, they take out the Embarcadero Freeway, and by 1991, the city of San Francisco and the Ports Commission hire these three designers, Stanley Sadowitz, Vito Acconci, and Barbara Stoffaker Solomon, who's a graphic designer and probably one of the most important artists of the 20th century, particularly for the West Coast. If you think about her influence on this work, it's the sort of graphic appeal of like a dark gray sidewalk with this white concrete strip with this beautiful green luminescent glass tiles that stretch the entire two and a half mile span. Eventually they come up with the term ribbon of light. And you may wonder why it's called ribbon of light since these glass blocks are never lit up. There were originally these fiber optic cables that run the entire span of the piece, but immediately the seawater corroded the electrical equipment that was used to light up these glass blocks, thus making the ribbon of light a ribbon of concrete and opaque glass. And before they even get built, there are massive compromises that the artists have to make. Their first plan was that this would be a continuous wall. The city said, no, 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 wheelchair users need to access the pier so you can't have this wall. So they create these gaps. And it's the gaps that matter. It's the gaps that activate this as a spot. There's actually like four different modules for block design that they planned when they were setting this out. The most basic one is the rectangular block. And then there's one where it's like flat on one side and just a ledge after the glass tiles. Then there's the high ledge. And then there's these weird ones, which it's so hard to believe they didn't want people to skate because it's like a perfect double-sided ledge. What they were intending here was for people walking along the sidewalk to think of the Bay Bridge. And it's as if you're like moving through this corridor where you have walls or hedges on either side. And now it's supposed to sort of echo the experience of driving over the Bay Bridge and having walls on either side of you. It's just a happy coincidence was the fact that you have these like perfect high ledges that lined these two piers. And that's where you'll see like James Kelch's Backside Smith. Carl Watson would skate the shit out of these. Of the two and a half miles of skatable surface, the real spots are like on the north end where those high blocks are and on the south end where we are now, where you have these like kind of cool gap to ledges. I was gonna say perfect, but they're not perfect at all. Mike Carroll's gap to front tail on the other side of this is really fucking gnarly. You, you have to ollie straight at it. The landing is also pretty narrow. It's like less than two feet. Within like, I don't know, a year of them building this in 1994, the city saw that people were skating here. And Stanley Sadowitz, one of the architects, was understandably pissed. And the city installed these unsightly pig ears or skate stoppers to keep people from skating. I mean, I like that it's called pig ears. It's like, you know, the surveillance of, of cops. It completely destroys the artist's intention because they had intended for this to be a kind of delicate addition to the waterfront and adding these really ugly metal clips to the edges of the ledge not only keeps people from skating, but really draws attention to the shittiness of the concrete that they ended up using. Then as you can see, once the pig ears have been removed, 
it takes a huge chunk of the concrete with it. You can actually see these fiber optic cables that originally intended to light up this entire strip of glass blocks. And I'm, I'm sure I'm touching someone's piss right now. The truth is, is that although most of it is skate stopped in some way and the concrete itself has not aged well, it's still two and a half miles of a skate spot that people are still figuring out how to skate. And to this day, this is a proving ground. This is one of these classic spots that people, when they come to San Francisco and they want to make their mark, they're still skating it, which is fucking awesome. Oh Barbara Stoffick or Solomon had this great thing to say about this work of art. She said, art is driven by liability and maintenance. Art is where you put your ass. Vito Acconci, when asked about what he thought about the Bay Block said, it began as a really great project and turned into a mediocre one. And finally, the port commissioner of SF said, the ribbon costs a million dollars and looks like shit. <laughs>